வணக்கம் மை நேம் இஸ் வரதன் ஐ மை ஃபேக்கல்டி மெம்பர் இன் த டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் அப்ளை மெக்கானிக்ஸ் அண்ட் பயோமெடிக்கல் இன்ஜினியரிங் திஸ் வீடியோ யூ வில் நாட் பி ஏபிள் டு சி மை ஃபேஸ் பட் ஐ வில் ரெக்கார்ட் வீடியோஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் டாபிக் அண்ட் ஆல் த ஃபியூச்சர் வீக்ஸ் வித் மை ஃபேஸ் அண்ட் வித் த ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் சம் எக்ஸ்டன்வேட்டிங் சர்கன்ஸ்டான்சஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் ஐ வெல்கம் யூ ஆல் தி என்பிடிஎல் கோர்ஸ் on biomedical instrumentation i hope you have had an opportunity to see go through the syllabus and the week wise content let's get started in this class we will get started with uh, an introduction to measurements how do we measure biomedical parameters what are some sensors and transducers what are the differences and what would constitute a generalized measurement system and uh, the characteristics of such a system will also give an overview of amplifiers perhaps you might have had an opportunity to learn about amplifiers in other courses for example what are some characteristics of amplifier gain bandwidth in input impedance output impedance and so on and so forth and what would be some signal processing techniques that we would use to process bio signals for example filtering low pass filter high pass filter band pass filter band reject filter or notch filters what are some sources of noise in biomedical measurements and uh, how do you reduce source of noise or how do you reduce noise sometimes you can reduce noise at the source itself sometimes you can reduce noise by processing so let's get started with uh, sensors and transducers so throughout we are interested in measuring physical phenomena but in this case we are not just interested in measuring any physical phenomena any physical phenomenon rather we are interested in measuring biomedical aspects these are also physical phenomena but those that are related to human health and what are those what are some examples of this transducers in biomedical engineering we have an absolute need to have highly accurate physiological data for example it is absolutely critical to have an idea of the blood pressure of a person temperature of a person these things these measurements constitute what are called as vital signs that is if these things exist the person is alive or these things exist within certain limits the person is alive if these things go above or below certain limits the person is not alive for example that's why they are called as vital signs for example a very low bp or a very high bp may be an indicator of an underlying pathology and let's remember that the measurement system to measure these physiological data by the way there are various ways of measuring pressure for example we are also interested in in other domains such as meteorology we are also interested in measuring atmospheric pressure there are other spaces where we are interested in measuring pressure for example we are interested in measuring pressure inside a pipe through which water or oil flows so the measurement technique for pressure might be something but in this case it needs to be adapted to the biomedical phenomena so we were discussing about blood pressure so blood pressure measurement will have to be is still pressure measurement but still it will have to be adapted to the biomedical aspect the idea is to convert physical quantity it's written a u entity essentially physical quantity into quantifiable bio signals so these physical quantities need not necessarily be electrical in nature they can be mechanical they can be chemical they can be from they can have different forms so how do we measure this there are several ways a couple of ways we discuss in this slide one is a transducer which is essentially a device 
that converts it says converts with an r there which converts energy from one form to another form a sensor is a special form of transducer that detects an input and converts into a measurable electrical signal so a transducer converts from one form of energy to another form of energy whereas a sensor converts it into almost always into an electrical measurement and it turns out that measuring information is especially from the human body is extraordinarily challenging because it turns out that if you want to measure some quantity that is some some phenomenon that is happening within the human body that is inside the human body you will have to place these sensors or transducers inside the human body which involves a, an invasive procedure that means you will have to send a sensor inside and it turns out that opening a skin causing a really small pinch and sending a sensor inside essentially is an insult to the system that means that you are taking a risk of infection so that is if you are interested in measuring a phenomenon that is inside the body whereas there are ways of measuring blood pressure for example from outside the body indeed there is a need to make measurements of blood pressure in a non contact method without touching can we make the current methods many methods are available that involve placing a manometer what is a manometer it is a, essentially a pressure sensor pressure tracker measuring device placing a manometer and uh, finding when the blood flow stops after inflating and then releasing it releasing the inflated uh, air and listening for what are called as crack of sounds some sound specific sounds this is the regular manometer this device is of course called as sphygmo manometer we know this this you would have seen in any general physician any primary healthcare center but there is a need to make this measurement from in a non contact manner how do we go about doing this for example so there are such challenging problems that are present in the human biomedical measurement environment and we are also interested in having these devices that have very high specificity and selectivity so in other words we are interested in making sure that the measurement of interest is exactly the measurement of interest and not something else it's not a replica or a representation of some other phenomena that some other phenomena may be from outside the body or maybe another physiological phenomenon that is happening in a neighboring region of the where from where the measurement system is placed one more thing is that the devices that you use to make measurements must not interfere with the measurement that you are making you know that's a fundamental principle of measurement that is i am interested in making a measurement and the manner in which i am making the measurement should not affect the measurement itself more importantly it should not affect the functioning of the biological system in other words it should not cause any form of harm or discomfort for example so it's absolutely important crucial for us to understand what are some properties of these sensors so that we use appropriate sensors for appropriate needs of the human measurement system what are some examples and characteristics of sensors and transducers so one is for example physiological transducers this is absolutely critical at the input stage of any closed loop biomedical measurement and biomedical system that is for example we already spoke about the you know the the blood 
pressure. And we are interested in measuring the characteristics so that it directly influences the overall performance of the, the overall instrument. So these are some of the needs of this device. For example, in this case, this is an arterial line that is uh, placed in the picture. Now I'm interested in, uh, you know, drawing blood or sending blood, for example. I'm also interested in this case in measuring, for example, the flow properties of blood. What are the transducers that I could use for this purpose? That's some of the Another idea is to use a smart sensor. What's a smart sensor? What's smart about the smart sensor is they just don't measure, but they also have a sort of a controller, an intelligent system. That is, it makes decisions based on the input data. So it comes in, it comes with built-in electronic circuitry that is able to make intelligent decisions based on the measurement that is being made. So it can perform tasks like amplification. For example, the signal that you are measuring might be very weak. Then it will perform amplification. It will convert data into a digital form and then it can perform calibration. It can also perform, for example, you know, if, if it is causing, if it is causing any heat, then it will also perform temperature compensation at the sensor level. So these are, and not just that, if it is converting from analog to digital, then it will also be able to take digital signal processing inside a computer. These kind of devices are considered smart and intelligent because it reduces the amount of workload on other computing devices and also on other human workforce and other human professionals because it provides information to the human in a more intelligible in a more intelligent and more understandable manner so it pro it provides not just raw data but it provides a sort of a processed data the advantages of having this as a smart sensor is because it it is coming in a single package and it gets converted into the digital form in the sensor itself. Usually it consumes much less power because these are electronic devices and provides improved reliability. With this, we will this segment of the video will continue in the next segment. <laughs>